Specializing is successalizing. Wow, that is not a good start. With so much online competition for being a web designer or developer, being a generalist won't get you very far. When there is no distinguishable factor between you and another designer, it only makes sense for clients to go for the cheapest option they can find, which is exactly what gets freelancers caught up in the race to the bottom to charge as little as possible. But when there is something that sets you above the rest, something specific that makes you more valuable than other freelancers, you're a lot more likely to get work. And that specific something is niching. So today we're gonna to look at all the ways you can niche as a web designer and become more sought out by clients. All right, so here's an overview of all the different ways that you can niche. To a platform like Webflow or Shopify, to an industry like restaurants or clothing stores, to an integration like HubSpot or Airtable, to a location like the city where you live, or to a visual look like tech inspired or soft and delicate. Let's do a proper deep dive into each of these now. Niching to an industry. Specializing for an industry is probably the most common thing people think of when they think of niching. The reason that it makes sense to niche this way is that businesses in a certain industry will often have similar requirements and goals. Restaurants want more customers, and so an emphasis on booking reservations and opening times will probably be important, whereas SaaS companies want more signups, so everything is directed at getting people to the signup page. To niche to a certain industry is to more intimately know the issues and the problems that that industry typically faces, and have knowledge on the best ways to solve that problem. The more you work on one specific industry, the more you can see what tactics do and don't work for a certain problem or transformation that a client is wanting to make. Over time, you'll also build up a portfolio suited to that industry, so all of your previous projects will reflect businesses in that industry, and you can also start to use language that the industry uses. So instead of saying, we help you to get more customers, you might say, get more users for software clients, or get more patients for healthcare clients, or get more students for education clients. You're shaping your language to use the wording that is used in that industry to show clients that you know what they need. Niche to a platform. So these days there are a lot of website building platforms that you can choose to build on. WordPress, Webflow, Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, Duda, Webly, Zyro, RocketSpark, Teachable, Webno, MS Paint, Jimdo, Web.com, Unbounce, Lead Pages, and more. Though it feels crazy that all of these platforms are being used to build websites, they all are. And a big reason why this is, is that a lot of these offer slightly different features suited to different kinds of uses. For example, Teachable is for building course-based websites, and so by learning how Teachable works, you can become a go-to designer for building Teachable course-based websites. By niching to a platform, you can change your freelancer title to be that platform expert, like John Smith, Teachable expert. And in that way, show clients that if they need to use that platform, they know that they can come to you to get help with it. Niche to an integration. Similar to niching to a platform, you can niche to knowing how specific apps integrate in with websites. So you could be the go-to person for connecting websites with Zapier, HubSpot, Salesforce, Airtable, MemberStack, and so on. With smaller clients, they likely won't want to reach out to an expert and would much rather try it themselves and screw up a couple of times. But for bigger organizations, it's not worth it for them for the potential of the systems or integrations breaking. So they would much rather go to an expert for the tool and have it done right the first time. Aaron, who runs Automate All The Things, is one of the go-to people for using Airtable. In fact, he's done a full course on it. So if a big company knows that they have to use an Airtable connection for their website and they want it done right the first time, then they can go to the expert and know that they will get a great result. Niche to a location. Though this is less of a niche, focusing on being known in the location you live in can still be a great tactic. You might already be known to your friends as the website designer guy like I am, but you can make this spread past your friends to everyone else in your area by advertising and showing up to meetups to spread your word. A lot of freelancers and studios rely on word of mouth to get new clients, and word of mouth can spread a lot faster when it's in one main location. Dan Smith Will Teach You Guitar is an ad that can be found plastered all around New York City. And because the same simple ad was used for long enough around New York, it resulted in a lot of coverage and plenty of satire. And so as a result of this, Dan will likely have a long backlog of students to teach guitar now that he's known super well in that specific location. Whether you decide to get your name out there with consistent advertising or just by showing up to events, niching to a location might be the way that you focus on getting new clients. Niching to an aesthetic style or look. A lot of famous artists are known for a unique look, one that you can't pass without saying, oh, that's a Keith Haring, or a Banksy, or a Monet. No, 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 not money, Monet, it's with a, it's with a T. Yeah, yeah, that's it. A lot of illustrators, painters, or tattoo artists build a following based on this, because customers say, I want something like that. So when a company needs a mural done, they say, we should go get one from Alice Lee. They know her name because of her specific style, and the exact same effect can work for web design. 
If you have a specific design aesthetic that you love, you can focus all of your work around it. So you can do websites that look futuristic techy or minimal and elegant, or focus on just using 3D elements. This way when a client is looking around for someone, they might come across your work and think, this is exactly the look that I'm wanting. And that's gonna make you a lot more likely to get clients that will give you the creative freedom to do your thing. So that's plenty of ways that you can niche as a web designer. But if you don't know how exactly you should niche, just focus on whatever interests you most, because that way you'll be likely to spend a lot more time learning and working with it, rather than picking something that seems to be popular, but that you have no interest in. So let me know if you found this helpful or interesting or any other thoughts that you have on niching in the comments below. Or if you have any recommendations for future videos, feel free to pop those in the comments too. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.